right, we'll see. Uh, typical weight, the 185, still staying steady at that weight until it starts to feel like actually comfortable. Right now it still feels decently heavy. Uh, so we're gonna time it two minutes, as long as I pick up the last rep at 159. I'm still gonna count it because that's what I've seen done in some competitions. Other competitions, you have to have it locked out before the end. I'm gonna uh, give myself the benefit of the doubt and go with how they do it at um, like the Rogue events, um, Rogue Invitational. I think even the Arnold did it that way. So enough talk, we shall see. Still figuring out the warmths on these. I did a couple reps with just the uh, log, a couple reps with the log and the, the uh, 25, which is like 135. Um, so now we're at 185, it's got a big jump, but we'll see. I think I just gotta, I just gotta get more focused. Get this done. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Let's hope for the best. Hope that doesn't fall off. And I'll wait until that says 30 seconds. Not as many gnats today, that's good. I'll wait until this thing goes by, whatever it is. I was going quick. I think I went a little too quick at the beginning. All right, so you saw the log press. Um, very happy with the first like five reps, and then I think the last two, I just I just got sloppy and uh, lost my chance at uh, eight reps there. Um, also, I think I went a little too fast at the beginning because some of it's strategy with uh, you know an endurance thing like that. I thought going faster at the beginning would help me, and it might have if I hadn't screwed up. You know, rep uh, six and seven, but. Learn from my mistakes on that one. Um, I was wobbling all over the place on, uh, I think it was rep six and seven, might have been five and six. There were two at the end. I mean, you saw them obviously, so you know what I'm talking about. So um, otherwise, I think the eight would have been there in the uh, two minute time frame. But uh, until next week, you know, they felt good. Obviously, on the uh, a cut now, the shred, day three, um, you know, it's expected if things stabilize a little more, especially with overhead and chest gains, as Brian was saying. Definitely agree with you there on that, Brian, but I'm going to do my best to not lose any and push forward if possible. Um, <clears throat> but just because there's less overall muscle used for a log press as compared to deadlift, I mean, deadlift, you got a lot of uh, a lot of muscle you can call on to get it done. So that should still be good tomorrow. Um, 
But anyway, nice day outside. Check it out. Making progress on the landscaping. The clearing is continuing, so good progress there. Got to check the weight, see what we got. Hopefully good things. Below 210 now is just where we want to stabilize. Which it should be. Interesting. I lied. Well, I did drink a decent amount of water, actually. And coffee. All right, so maybe tomorrow it'll be down a little bit. We'll see. <clears throat> All, right, All right, there's the workout plan. Obviously, I'm a failure. Disappointment to my family with that log press there. We'll do better next week. Learn from the mistakes there. On to the behind the neck press up next. Three sets, 145. Hopefully, 8 to 10 on the first one, and then, you know, drop a rep or two on each set. And then we'll do some laterals and rears and crush it. Right. Second set, let's do better. Nine was okay, but. I was definitely considering doing another set on the behind the neck. Well, actually, that was the plan, but I felt like that last set was pretty much maximum effort. Um, so figured, hey, let me let me jump on to the um, laterals and rears. So here we are. So 30s, um, hopefully 15, and then we'll go right into the uh, rear delt. So we'll just kind of go back and forth and burn things out. <sighs> that behind the neck, much better, less setup and time. I was like, hey, I'm ahead on times because I didn't have to move everything out there and do all that. So that's definitely going to be the move from now on. Slide that over. There we go. All right. What did I say? 20? All right. I think that log press has definitely led to some good shoulder gains. Well, obviously, just bulking in general has, but being able to press in a neutral position is something I've never done overhead really. Um, it's always been, you know, out to the side, like a normal shoulder press with a dumbbell. So 
think I've been able to use substantially more weight. I mean, I definitely can't barbell press. At least I don't think I can. 185 um, for that many reps. So I think I've been able to overload. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's a expensive piece of equipment. Um, and I, you know, took, took a while before I got one. Um, it was actually a gift. I was looking online um, and trying to find used ones, and there just wasn't anything close to me. Um, so I lucked out. Thank you very much to, uh, it was actually my parents got me the log. Thank you very much to my parents. That was an awesome, awesome gift. Um, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty solid as far as equipment and moving forward. Definitely not something I would ever be able to get for uh, myself, or at least, you know, I wouldn't have then. Um, I would have had to wait a while and, you know, I was kind of excited about it and I still am. I use it every week. All right. Anyway, all, all, all that to say, like, it is a great piece of equipment, but, you know, if you don't have a log, a dumbbell press of some type or, a, you know, a good barbell press would be fine. I just think, I think it does provide a little bit of an advantage because of that grip positioning, but somebody smarter than me, I'm sure, can explain maybe why that is. I think it's to do with the uh, neutral grip, but there could be other factors. The deadlift bar, thankfully, was uh, at a lower price point, and there was someone that was in the area, sort of, that had it. Because um, the used deadlift bar is even more than a log, or uh, sorry, a uh, brand new deadlift bar is pretty pricey. Like, I think that one is like 350 or something like that before shipping. And obviously, shipping's going to be a lot because it weighs 45 pounds. But I've, I've wanted a deadlift bar for quite a long time and um, just figured I should build up to something a little heavier before making the jump. Um, I have heard from Kaylor Wollerman, that's how you pronounce it, um, Dr. Deadlift. And so what he was saying was that if it's under 500 pounds, then it doesn't make a huge difference. I mean, you can see the bar bending a little bit, um, like 315 and 405, if you really like rip it off the ground. Um, but, you know, when I got to 585 and like 495, it really started to, you know, pull the slack out of the bar a little bit and you can see it start to bend. Um, also, tomorrow's deadlift day. I put a poll on the uh, YouTube channel, but if you didn't see that, what do you think I should go for? The options are 500 for 10 would be a super cool PR, but then also just moving right up to 520 for six to eight reps, um, depending on how things feel. Um, if the central nervous system is feeling shot, then we'll have to go with the uh, lighter option or possibly take a deload. I don't know. I'm still pretty hyped up about the deadlift from last week. So good the mic didn't die. I feel like that alone is going to motivate me to do well. Um, so I'm kind of going to feed off that. Also, I felt like there was a little more in the tank on the 585. So I didn't feel like it was, although challenging, I didn't feel like it was maximum effort. I felt like it was like 92 to 95. Um, hence why I thought about doing another rep. <sighs> All right. Last thing, I'm just going to do body weight on these for 10, toast to shoulders, and then decompress, and that's it. Man, this workout is a lot faster if I don't have to haul everything outside to do the standing behind the neck press. And I save the lower back a little bit. All good things. <sighs> All right, that's it. I'm going to uh, decompress, possibly get a little calories, although the scale says that I'm pudgy, not pudgy, but heavier than I um, thought I would be. But that could be due to water. I mean, if you drink a lot of water, that could potentially increase your body weight by a pound. So I had water, coffee. That's the pre-workout, by the way. I don't know if anybody's ever asked about that, but now you know. Um, no, no supplements or anything. Just coffee as the uh, pre-workout. One cup. Nothing crazy. I have another cup in the morning 
to start the day and then one before the workout. Um, and that is it. Rare occasions, maybe like half of a third cup or something like that. Um, you know, depending on how energy is, but the energy really comes from the food. Like if your food is crappy for the day, the coffee might help a little bit, but it's not going to do that much. If your food is really good, your sleep is really good. And then I have some caffeine. It's like, okay, it's going to be a good day, which will be the plan tomorrow. Um, so yeah, that's it. Appreciate the support as always. If you made it this far in the video, you are super awesome. Um, drop a, uh, comment about that deadlift. Um, oh, uh, What's the uh, most, if you made it this far in the video, what's the um, like strongest strongman currently who you think has a shot at pulling 1,100 pounds, 1,105, sorry, not 1,105, Thor already did that. No, he did, he did 1,102, breaking the deadlift record um, out, of, out of the uh, grouping that's out there right now. Interested to see what people think about that. I think, obviously, Thor, because he has the current record. Um, you know, has a, has a very good shot at it, but I think there's a lot of other people out there too. Ivan Makarov is just a tank and he's attempted it more than anyone else, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, interested to uh, hear what people have to say about that. Um, and yeah, that's it for today. Hope your day's going well until tomorrow, deadlift day. Um, see you then. Peace.